so delighted and honored to be here today at the Asia Destination Fan Forum because one of my videos, the Patalum video, has been selected in the final round of uh, the Asia Destination Fan Award. excited but most of all I will meet like a lot of people like great people from the two industries from tourism industry and film industry and we have a lot of sharing sessions today so let's follow me and take a look inside uh, how exciting it will be for the whole day come on Talking about your movie, The Cave, uh, how did it all happen? Because the events of the 13 boys, it just happened um, in 2018. Not long after that, just over a year, the movie came out. Well, you know, I was watching the news like everyone else in July of 2018 and, and you know, people were all over the planet were watching it and, yeah. and I was absolutely fascinated by the story. It was uh, something that was happening in Thailand which put really this place in Chiang Rai, Tam Luang Caves, right on the global map. Yeah. And I just thought that any film about this event would certainly have not only a Thai audience, but a worldwide audience as well. Mm -hmm. Right. What are the challenges in making this film in such a short time? Well, to be honest, the, the real challenges came when we came to uh, finding permission to shoot at the wow. real cave, because I wanted it to be authentic. I wanted the story to really, to, to show that we could uh, um, reenact the story in the in the in the place where it took place okay. because uh, you know there's after the event it suddenly became like a, a kind of tourist trap and yes, we yes. had you know 2,000 tourists a day going to visit Tam yes, Wong and, yeah. and although they couldn't get into the cave uh. were, the whole place had changed so we had to find uh, a new place to, to recreate the story mm -hmm. and that meant us going to other parts of Thailand to try and recreate the story. One of the things that I did for, for, for this film was to find uh, real caves which had, which were you know, waterlogged caves which had water all year round okay. and to reenact those scenes in, in authentic situations. All right. So for us trying to find real caves that we could shoot in safely okay. was a challenge. And finally you found in which province? Actually we, we filmed in Sakel province. So, so I, that's I a plug for uh, Sakyao. Yeah, Sa Sakyao is a lovely place. Yes, it's yes. Uh, not so many people there. Uh, it's hidden right on gem. the a hidden gem, right on the Cambodian border. And uh, you know, we have, were very well uh, serviced with uh, local extras, and people from the community came to be in, involved in the project. And it was a long way from Tam Luang, but it, it, it had the feeling of a mountainous range yes. with a cave. And uh, we are very happy to be able to, to make the film there. Yes. And along the journey of filming yourself, what was your like, top impression? Uh, to be honest, what, what I had underestimated was just how many people had followed this story. So everyone has their own ideas about what the film should be. So that was also a challenge, was trying to stick to the story that I mm -hmm. wanted to tell. Mm -hmm. Because everyone thinks that they're an expert on this story. You know, mm -hmm. they watch the news, they read the newspapers, they've seen the on the internet. Yes. Uh. So, Obviously, my film is a very uh, personal account of some of the unsung heroes involved yes. in the rescue. Yes. And this is the, 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 the story and the narrative choices that I made for this film. It may not be what everyone else wants to see. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe they want to see like an action movie mm -hmm. or, or something like that. And, mm -hmm. and so for me, it was about trying to stick to the story that I wanted to tell. Yes. So what's next after the film has been shown here in Thailand already? Well, actually, the film has been playing in cinemas all around of Southeast Asia. So we've oh. been released in Myanmar, Laos, okay. Malaysia, Brunei, right. uh, Vietnam. And we're also going to be opening in Europe next month. So we're opening in Norway, Sweden, Finland, Poland. Wow. Wow. So the film really is going around the planet. And I'm hoping that mm. audiences in, in countries like the UK and the US will mm. eventually see it. Mm. Maybe not in the cinemas. Maybe they're going to see it on a streaming service, mm. like a, um, a video on demand or uh, internet. Please something about the movie for yeah. the global audience please <laughs> please go check out the cave coming to a cinema near you maybe and uh, you can always check us out on the website thecave.movie yeah thank you so much
All right. I hope that was okay. We'll see you next time. Singapore Tourism Board and I'm based here in Bangkok. Yes. I've just been to the Jewels. Oh wow. Last year. Do you like it? Very much. I was it was beyond my expectation. Oh. The real place. It was it was just like you can spend the whole night in that place. Yes. Or overnight without coming to the city. Yes. So so that is what we wanted to do. Uh, the jewel Changi itself with something that uh, was one of the master plans. The, of the Changi Airport, so that that was one of the uh, things that we wanted to 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 see if we can actually capture some of the transit passengers to yes. invite them to come out and see Singapore. I think it's one of the best ideas I've seen in you know yes. in Asia. Now coming to the the movie Crazy Rich Asians. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I've heard that it went on the top on the chart in the U.S. Yes. In 2018. Yes, it was. Or probably. maybe until now. <laughs> how, how, how did it all happen and how could you bring like the cast and crews from the US to Singapore? When the original team and uh, production crew from Warner Brothers came to Singapore uh, and they started to pitch the idea to us, okay. a lot of us were quite skeptical. It was a brave step for us to say that yes, let's, let's try to see if we can do something about it. What the Singapore government did was to provide some of the funding and support for, oh. for the production of the film. Okay. When, when the film was actually launched in August 2018, what, uh, uh, yeah, what, what <laughs> we as uh, at the Singapore Tourism Board STB, what we did was to uh, also help to market and to amplify the message. Yeah. Okay. Any message that you particularly wanted the film to convey to the audience? Uh, for me personally, it would be that we are all not crazy rich. <laughs> <laughs> well, but in the movie, but yeah, it looks yeah, so yeah. nice in the movie. Yeah, yeah it looks so nice, right? Uh, but yeah, not all of us are crazy rich. Um, a lot of us are actually just like you and I, so so we're just everyday commoners. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so, uh, but nonetheless, what uh, you see in the film, uh, what you see from Singapore, it has actually brought a lot of attention and yeah. awareness of yes. awareness of for Singapore, especially yes. in our Western countries. Yeah. So so we did see quite a big number that jump in actually the the US and uh, UK business to sell. Okay. So, so after the movie was launched, everybody wanted to go to the Marina Bay Sands. Uh. Everybody wanted to have a wedding at the, the Chimes area. Uh, the Chimes. Where, where I love yeah. I love Chimes. It was such a romantic scene, you know, the water flooding into the walkway. Right. It is already a very popular wedding destination, yes. for, even for the Singaporeans. Yeah. After the movie was launched, <laughs> You can not get a, a booking. The, the film actually helped us to to bring awareness of Singapore, yes. where we are, what we have to offer. What's new in 2020? The Marina Bay Sands is going to have a fourth tower. Oh, so, so right now it's three okay, hotel towers. Yes. We will have a fourth okay. tower. Okay. Uh, there will be a, a thousand overseater arena. Then we will see more shows coming in. World class entertainment. Yeah, musicals. I love musicals. Yes, I, I love it too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then uh, in Resorts World, we are starting to see them developing. Okay. Uh, Universal Studios will be revamping two areas. How have you been working with video content creators from anywhere in the world? Uh, with access of mobile phones and internet, everyone is consuming media on the digital platform, on the go and all the time. Okay. So, so engaging people like you yourself yeah. is actually very important for us. Everyone is fighting for everybody's attention. Yes. So it's really to identify really good content creators mm. such as yourself Thank um, you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to really get a very strong and compelling story yeah. uh, and, and it must of course be an authentic one because at the end of the day we don't want to be selling you something that you will only see in the movies mm -hmm. we want you to really see and experience it yourself beyond crazy rich Asians I would really want everybody to go to Singapore and experience it yourself uh, and Looking forward to see you in Singapore. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Have a good day.
how did you like transfer some experiences from your musical years to to I filming? Think, um, I think whether it's theater or film, um, it's all about storytelling. Yes. But you're just using different tools. So I think um, once you master the tools, you will be able to tell the story in the best possible way in that yes. medium. Yes. So, so I think I, I value my, my experience in theatre a lot because it helps me with um, creating characters, yes. helping actors to understand how the characters are going through because on stage you, you have no cuts, you have yes. no editing to help. So that's, that's good and I think theatre also helps me um, understand the essence of themes whenever you want to tell the story. So um, yeah, but I enjoy both um, film and theater and television. Oh yeah, yeah. And they all have different, they all have different um, charms. Charms. When you direct actors and actresses, mm. they have to act like differently for theater um, and, and film? I think that theater actors tend to have, a, tend to be very grounded and because Theatre is a medium that needs a lot of body language to help. Yes. So um, I think sometimes people tend to say that the theatre actors tend to be too too big, you know, express too much. So, um, but I, I think good actors can do anything. But when I direct actors uh, for film or TV, I tend to tell them that don't show me how you feel, just feel it, okay. and I will capture with the camera because the camera is larger than life mm -hmm. so all you need to do is be to give us emotional honesty right uh, it's up to us to capture it and if it's not enough we'll tell you okay yeah. okay so for the Netflix project it right. started back how many years ago two years ago okay so it's the first we ever started, yeah the first ever Thai yeah just uh, released Thai uh, original. in November last year wow okay and for the eight locations, how did you select? Um, like these I, I think locations? we wanted to really find um, what's real in natural spaces um, to help us um, express the different characteristics of the island. Right. So um, instead of relying too much on computer graphics, um, we try to find real spaces. Um, and because the island has it's evolving before our very eyes. When the series starts, it's really a picturesque heaven. Yes. And slowly, it starts to assume different personalities. So I think as a result, we need to find more than one location uh -huh. to capture the spirit of this um, ever-changing island in the series. The series is available on Netflix worldwide. Okay. In, uh, with, close to with English with, uh, with I think they have like almost 20 languages, languages and wow. also dubbed in Spanish in, in so many languages okay. because it's uh, the first Thai Netflix original and uh, I think the response has been very very encouraging. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So now anyone can just click onto yeah, Netflix. Yeah, you can just and click the stranded and you'll, stranded. you'll find the first Thai Netflix original. Okay, so maybe let, let's at least just say a few words to the audience. Uh, well, so if you haven't watched The Stranded, I invite you to join us on the journey in this very special island. And uh, if you have seen it, see it again. Alright, thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Mekong Tourism, we do a lot of projects that relate to visual storytelling, mm -hmm. you know, for people to share their experiences, visual content to inspire other people to travel in the Mekong region mm -hmm. and also to mm -hmm. drive sustainable mm -hmm. tourism. Right. So we have uh, our Mekong Mini Movie Awards. Yes. And we need to give them out. You won, I think, one before? Or, 2017. Uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, so we kind of couldn't find an appropriate platform to mm. do that. You know, mm. if you do it in a better, bigger trade show, it gets lost. But there's no real film tourism conference. Mm. 
So we created our own mm -hmm. you know, to do that. But first it was more um, a panel on film tourism and then we give out the awards. Mm -hmm. And that has gotten a lot bigger and almost has become now its own brand with uh, Destination Film Forum. Mm -hmm. The forum you know, kind of consists of the, the conference. Mm -hmm. um, then we have the film screening, where this year we, we screen a Mongol award-winning Mongolian video uh, film and an award-winning Cambodian uh, film. Yeah. Um, so with the producers here, then we have the awards, mm. and then we have the film party, which this year is hosted by uh, the Ministry of Environment and Tourism of Mongolia. Wow! But really, not just about motion picture, but also going down to video bloggers like yourself. You know, you were on a panel earlier this morning. Yeah. So we really want to kind of hit the entire gambit of audiovisual mm. industries. You know, how to you leverage visual storytelling. You know, mm. for travel and tourism, drive sustainability and kind of build this bridge between filmmakers and yes. film productions and video bloggers and so on, content creators, to travel the industry. travel industry, from tourism boards to hotel companies, tour operators, airlines. But this was designed to be a boutique event, you know, yeah. and that makes it kind of fun and special too because you can connect with anybody. Yeah. Um, you meet Hollywood producers here that normally yeah. you would never meet. Yeah. You meet tourism ministers here and senators and, and, and so yes. on that you normally don't meet. Yes. Um, so in one little space, y you have some very casual conversations um, that are inspiring, fun, and, and could lead to something yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. So the event today ended with the barbecue party hosted by Mongolian government. Alright, so thank you so much for watching. See you in the next episode. Please subscribe.